I don't know if that person's aware, but everyone in Texas is packing heat and I'm pretty <laughs> sure that they can use the bathroom wherever the fuck they want because they're Texans. Any room I'm in is a bathroom. They use the bathroom on the Alamo, right? Yeah, uh, that was uh, yeah, famously done by um, Ozzy Osbourne, who was just watching Airheads where they were mentioning that. It is time, one back, rocks the house. Who'd win in a wrestling match? Lemmy or God? Lemmy. Ah. Later, Bacon. <laughs> Lemmy is God. Care what people say you're awesome <laughs> i love backhanded compliments all right in three two one hey everybody welcome to season two of back to the podcast with your host justin neal and i am chris lawler we're here to talk about everything past present and future about film and we've got an exciting show today i can't believe that we're on season two justin are you glad to be back or what yeah this is fantastic i had a great break i really needed to unplug and uh, i can't wait to keep talking about movies we've got lots to talk about especially coming up in 2024 yeah that is going to be the topic of today's show we're going to take a look ahead actually this year at what we're getting excited for for 2024 we were able to go and take some time, look at some trailers, do some research, and find some real fun movies are coming out this year. Oddly enough, Justin, I don't know if you know this, but we got sponsored this year. We are very happy to announce that we've got a sponsor here and they're gonna be carrying some merchandise for us. So before we dive into today's episode, a big shout out to our sponsor, Cosplay Curiosities. They're an amazing e-commerce store created by cosplayers for cosplayers, offering a unique range of apparel to keep your cosplay spirit alive, even when you're not in costume. Whether you're between conventions or just taking a break from cosplaying, their collection is perfect for representing your passion. And here's a treat. Visit cosplaycuriosities.com and then you can use the code BTTP at checkout for an extra 20% off on your purchase. Again, that's cosplaycuriosities.com and the discount code is BTTP, all caps, for 20% off. Now, let's get started with the show. I'm excited to look ahead, but before we do, Justin, you got caught up with some stuff over the break, it sounds like. What did you see? Was it amazing? I got to watch a bunch of stuff and I'm really happy about that and I'll end with the one that I want to talk about most, but I'll just kind of go through so I went and saw the Iron Claw. Oh, did you really? It's exactly what everyone says it is. It's an emotional wrestling movie with Zac Efron and Jeremy Allen White. Oh, dude. It was just really, really well done across the board. I wasn't blown away, but it was just solid. It's totally worth watching. That makes me really happy to hear that you enjoyed it, man, because I've been pumped. Like that, when a trailer like makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up, I'm, I'm like, man, I gotta watch that again. I want that, that sensation. And that trailer did it. I'm really excited to see it. I'm glad you enjoyed it enjoyed it man i mean so try not to spoil it but everyone in there up for academy awards and stuff in this one i was really impressed with zach efron i think this is his sort of nice. first major play at more serious work it helps that he had a complete physical transformation mm -hmm. like his face even changed he didn't look quite the same mm. it's not a loud and bombastic performance it's a very small and very quiet hmm. i love my brothers and i want to wrestle that's all that and matters that's what it to seems me. like yeah from the trailers and it's just good and heartfelt and it's tragic i actually don't know the story of the family oh i chose not to look it up and do that research so the whole thing is a tragedy. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, but it sounds- You don't leave it feeling good. Yeah. It's really well done. I think it was done very respectfully. And anyway, okay. it was just solid. It was one of those like, this is a good solid adult drama. I like a good job, everyone. Nice. I can't wait. I also, because of Bottoms, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I was a big fan of, I followed that to Bodies, 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 okay. which I posted something on the Facebook page, back to the podcast yeah. discussion. <laughs> shameless plug. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what we do, right? <laughs> yeah. This whole thing's a shameless plug. It's nothing but. I had to get over that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is a good dark comedy, takes place in one house during a hurricane, so no one can leave, and they play this game called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Okay. And actually bodies start showing up not showing up as in uh they're uh, arriving unannounced it means people start dying yeah in a clue sort of way that sounds like fun the hurricane's going so they're trapped but it's a real dark comedy okay it's a satire of safe spaces and where'd you see the bodies 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 at did you rent that i rented that okay. one on amazon prime did you just fucking shoot me i can't believe you're making this about you
I watched, or we watched, actually my wife and I watched all of these. I should just, she's just included. Yeah, right. Unless otherwise stated. Uh, we watched Bradley Cooper's Maestro about Leonard Bernstein. And? So that is not a topic I particularly care for. Okay. It's just not something of the 20th century I have spent much time studying right. mm -hmm. at all is him and his work. So it's not really, I, I don't know anything about it, but boy, they were swinging for the fences performance wise. Were they? That whole movie exists to like- Oscar bait? Exhibit the performances, yeah. especially Bradley Cooper. And oh my God, I'm completely going. And she was just in the movie that I watched last night. Oh, you just like, like, I just lost you there. You just like had a whole complete collapse there. <laughs> I what can't is her name? save you right now. I We talked about it on <laughs> the show a few Fridays back, but I'm drawing the biggest blank because I've slept since then. And, you know, that happens. So I'm just going to keep going. You do so, that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, it's really all about the performances and... There were certain scenes that I thought were really, really, really well done, but overall, I, it's just what it wasn't for me. Okay, so yeah. I really kind of need the opinion of someone it really so was for. If you could compare it to say something like Mr. Holland's Opus, totally different movie, totally different movie, and it doesn't hit like heartstrings and stuff like no. just a biopic and super dramatic, huh? This is all about like the tension underneath. And is it all like artsy and stuff because Bradley Cooper wants it to? It is very artsy. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I got from the trailer for sure. I don't think you're going to like it actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. I mean, so what is the movie that everyone was wanting your opinion on? But then? first, before I get to that one, the one that I did really like. Oh, oh, we. I thought you had already mentioned it. Okay. No, no. So one that I really did like uh, that I saw in the theater is Michael Mann's new movie that he's been planning forever, and that's Ferrari with Adam Driver. Dude, everybody's been talking about that, so yes. It's really good. Okay. It's hard for me to know how it will play to non- either like racing or car fans like I am. Well, I am the audience for that movie. I'm not necessarily, but I really like car movies that are done well. Like Ford versus Ferrari was one of those like surprise. Then you'll probably like it. Okay, so then I, I'm down. In the world of racing, because I'm a big Formula One fan. Oh, okay. And, and I started watching Formula One like way before Netflix put out Drive to Survive, which everyone knows now. Gotcha. So is that why you saw Gran Turismo and I haven't? Probably. Okay. <laughs> and the thing about Enzo Ferrari is that is a name that, you know, right. looms large. Yeah. <gasps> over the industry in terms of racing and cars in general. Me and you have different experiences with this. I mean, I come from the gaming world, so I I know of cars and the history told through from video games. games. Yeah, absolutely. Forza, the series Forza does an amazing job of making sure that- I like Forza. Under, oh, so you're familiar, yeah. So I play Forza, yeah. They do a lot of great stuff where they're like teaching you about the history and the lineage of a car and stuff like that. It's beautifully put together. Oh, the racetracks too, that was one thing. All those racetracks are there. But yeah, that, I, I do love like the that kind of stuff i mean especially once again i'm gonna go back to ford versus ferrari like i really enjoyed them like problem solving and you know figuring out the car and like i'm like seeing like how they think and how they see it and it's like wow that's amazing see this is the thing this isn't an engineer's movie like that one would be in terms of what you're thinking it's a more about his relationships between his uh -huh. estranged wife and now his baby mama well that's even a more interesting take okay and his son who doesn't carry his name is coming of age and will he get the name will he not and it's all about these like re relationship conflicts that are going on wow okay behind you know what's going on in the late 50s and that was actually the coolest thing for me is a lot of this stuff because mm -hmm. i like history because i'm a history nerd so when i started getting into racing in formula one i went way back to the beginning and i, I was like i want to know where this came from and why we are where we are and i will understand where we are better if i know where we came from just like anything else right so there's a lot of stuff about that time and a lot of lore about ferrari and, and enzo ferrari who's the man and you know kind of the racing team that he created in the circumstances because there was a lot of you know, it was very dangerous yeah and that's part of it too it ends with a, a racing tragedy oh it does but most of that stuff is either in black and white so them recreating it in color yeah even the video footage it's weird and cranky and you know it doesn't have the right frame rates just it 
doesn't look yeah. real, a lot of that stuff. And so the coolest thing, like so many things, when you see it put up on a big screen, mm -hmm. and that argument can be made for anything from Marvel to World War II, um, but in the 50s, just to see this stuff brought to life in color and to, to get the textures and the sounds of what these racing cars actually sounded like and just how unsafe all of this was and they're racing in like leather helmets and yeah you know they didn't wear seat belts because it was safer most of the time to be thrown from the car than to be trapped in it so that you're not stuck in it burning yeah even though it shows a crash of what happens mm. when you get thrown from the car it doesn't shy away from the danger that was that so sport and things like that but anyway michael mann if you know michael mann of course yeah it's a really solid michael mann film Adam Driver does fantastic. He's doing really good work recently. I almost feel like he's a little, he's straying into being overcast territory. But like the, he's, the guy's got range, man. I mean, he crushed it on SNL. I'm not talking about his yeah. range. I know that. It's I know. That I it's know. oversaturation. Yeah. Like eventually you're going to be like, yeah, he's fucking good. But That's sometimes Hollywood's problem. They got a one track mind, right? They want to ride the coattails of popularity instead of just casting what's right. Timothy Chalamet is like that right now. He's an it boy the moment Chris you Pratt, think so you know. I mean but I definitely dig Adam Driver and stuff and oh yeah he's fantastic I would love to see more stuff I would really enjoy him in more comedy I think he's very funny in comedies I think he hasn't just been in the he just hasn't been in the right one yet because he can be so serious yeah. he can use that right. for his comedy but the big one that everyone's been asking me about recently oh, it wasn't even Ferrari this is the big kind of provocative it movie at the moment and that is Emerald Fennel's salt burn. I've only seen like the poster in the title. So I know, I, I honestly don't know this. One. Okay. It's kind of controversial. Huh. Like recently we talked about the crying game. Mm -hmm. It's talked about in the same sort of that same like whispers. I feel like, Oh, this is the way they talked about the crying game. Okay. Got it. Cool. I don't know if you saw promising young woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to watch that one too. Oh my God. The same girl from Maestro. Oh my God. You didn't bring your A game today. People are going to be banging on the screens right now. Forgetting names. It'll hit me before this episode's over. <laughs> You're just going to blurt it out randomly. And I won't look it up. I guarantee it's just going to pop into your mind here shortly. So it's all burned. And the idea is that this boy comes to Oxford, England, and it's set in 2006. And he is not a rich kid. And he kind of doesn't fall in love with but you know becomes you know enticed by this like pretty boy aristocrat mm -hmm. and he goes out of his way literally to befriend him and through claims of suffering he weasels his way into this person's kind of circle and then gets invited to his family's estate for the summer because of his circumstances. Things are bad at home, and so here, just come to my family for the summer. Okay. So it's an aristocratic summer movie, essentially, and he worms his way into the family. Okay. And I'm not going to spoil it for everyone, but there are a couple of scenes of things that you don't normally see in movies. Okay. That, that I mean, obviously, when you just say something like that, that leaves so much intrigue. Okay. It's the taboos, like in The Crying Game. That was taboo. Where can you see Saltburn at? I had to read this one. Okay. Good to know. One of the things, though, I will say that that drove me nuts was it was done in a four by three aspect ratio. Oh, really? And that makes no sense to me because it's set in 2006 hmm. vhs was long gone by then i can get it if someone's trying to do something like robert eggers the witch or he did the lighthouse you know what i mean where it's like mm -hmm. weird and art house and black and white and it you know it's historic so they used like lenses of the time and shit like that makes sense to me but to do a four by three aspect ratio on a huge 16 by nine screen when it's not time appropriate makes no sense to me at all. Okay. I kept feeling like I'm watching a pan and scan VHS movie and this will be great when it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray and I can actually get the full frame because it's beautiful photography and why would you cut off huh. almost half of the frame on each side Damn. for no reason? You're really laying into them. <laughs> I get the idea. I, 
I read she did it because it, it feels like you're peeping into the world. Okay. And that's cute for one shot, like, through a keyhole. Or maybe, like, going from, like, your intro that, like, just changes the aspect ratio. I, actually, yeah. I said to Lindsay at the beginning, it was like, I wonder how long she's going to hold this aspect ratio before it switches into... A wider thing, like, opening your eyes or whatever, yeah. There's no reason for her to do this unless this is just an intro thing. Whole movie. <laughs> Justin's not happy about this, but at the end of the day, is this still a, a movie you would recommend? Oh yeah, you should totally check it out. Okay, recommend. He's recommending. What it. I like about it is it gets you talking. And actually, me and my group of friends, we've all been texting all morning. Like I got an old group of friends, and we've all been texting about. I'll it. I'll see if I can get some time to watch that one. Yeah. I want you to see it, and then we can talk about it. It's better to talk about with someone who has seen. Okay, it, you know what I mean. Which is what we were all doing. You got it. I understand. And what's great about it it is a movie to talk about okay that's the point and someone could even say that's to the detriment that it's style over substance i don't know sometimes that gives it longevity because then that conversation comes up down the road and they're like you know what screw it we're watching it again and then i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna show you, you know what I mean? even so. if this wasn't you know my favorite of hers or whatever when it was over i thought okay i don't think i'll ever go home again to see what she does next okay you know what i mean like mm -hmm. which is good like because this is her sophomore effort and that has to be taken into account yeah. in a body of work the sophomore movie is especially because her first one she won an academy award who's this again for best original screenplay emerald fennel is her emerald name she's fennel. an okay. actress mm -hmm. and also producer and now writer director but her first movie was promising young woman okay with you just think, hoping it would just like lightning strike into your brain there. I don't think it's yeah, gonna happen. That I'm way. setting myself up for it. Well, right I on, man. Believe. And she's also in Drive. He's just falling apart over here, folks. You kind of have to save him in the comment section and let him know who he's thinking about. So anyway, you need to see Saltburn for sure. But that aside, it actually I don't know if you read the news recently. I know you're the newsman now. News guy, yeah. If you're checking out Hollywood highlights on Fridays, yeah, now. plug it. <laughs> Shout out to Chris at Hollywood highlights on Fridays. <laughs> Check it out. You should watch Hollywood highlights on Fridays. I want to make sure that I'm still remembering that I'm looking forward to movies. Yes, I can be disappointed and there are movies I don't like, but at the end of the day, I'm still a cinephile that I, I want to be surprised. I want to have that excitement again. I want to sit down and have a new uh, favorite film. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's always fun. That's why we keep trying. But do you You've got something anyway you got something else on the agenda yeah so go for it the oscar nominations aren't released until january 23rd that's coming up so technically it's not a switch because they haven't announced them yet mm -hmm. but, but barbie the the camp behind barbie uh -huh. and their campaign okay. they were campaigning for best original screenplay for it and the Academy has announced that it will go into the best adapted screenplay category. And that means that it's like adapted from a TV show, novel, or sc another screenplay or something, right? Well, it's previous material. Right, something like that. But see, it's not... But it's not previous material. In fact, it is very original. I mean, they didn't take, like, the Barbie, like... TV show like they've got the animated show they didn't take that and turn it into a live action movie when I first and it's not like Barbie has a storyline to begin yeah, with when I first read that my gut was like well fuck them <laughs> well fuck them that's a great original screenplay okay yeah you know what I mean that was my first it was like that is a totally original screenplay I mean they could have still told that story you know in a different light right like there were so many layers to that totally using Barbie was a great avenue for that kind of storytelling in the article I read mm -hmm. that was sent to me by my sister about it one of the uh, examples they had cited that had been applicable previously was Toy Story 3 and how the screenplay for Toy Story 3 was up, but it was up for an adapted, not original. Even though the story was original, it was the characters hmm. and the like hmm. concepts or whatever hmm. were established enough hmm. to be considered well, an adapted screenplay. Yeah. And that's what they're kind of citing. So my first thought was, well, fuck that. That was a great original screenplay. Then my second thought was, you know, I bet 
this happened because the other original screenplay camps all knew they would lose to it <laughs> and so all of them started making calls like you do because this is you a, think they're pushing it out this is what happens <laughs> behind closed doors right i know like it's all a bunch of phone calls mm -hmm. and meetings and luncheons and shit yeah and so i bet they called they were like this this is adapted this is not original this is not original this is adapted and there was enough of that camp right on. now uh, Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach have to go up against Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer adaptation right and I feel like he pretty much had that one firmly on lockdown they should just give it to both of them it should be a Barbenheimer Academy Award <laughs> and I thought they would give like him adapted and them original that's what I thought but now they're both gonna be in the same category what do you think about that what's your opinion on like should that be original or adapted I mean honestly I can see I can listening to you represent the argument from the Academy it's like well I guess I can see both but it just feels like they're doing it on a technicality when at the end of the day it's not like they did once like we were talking about like they didn't adapt it from a cartoon they didn't take it from some novella that was made in the 50s you know when barbie was invented that's using some like original story like they told a story using barbie to talk about you know modern contemporary deep stuff. topics so i don't know i guess that's us because this was a great year for film right so we had some amazing movies come out so why snuff it and then of course then i go you know let them play their own game i guess if that's how it's played i just thought that was interesting well we'll have to see what happens in a couple of weeks when they really make official announcements and stuff so maybe we'll uh talk about that i've never been big into award season but it is exciting this year because there were some amazing movies yeah it has to be taken with a grain of salt yeah obviously we know how this works really mm -hmm. so it's not like you know it really matters but if you care about movies it's a part of it yeah it is yeah i've been watching the academy awards my entire life pretty much yeah i i've definitely missed a couple of years but the academy awards for last year are gonna be amazing because last year was amazing but this year has got some amazing mo movies as well yeah, yeah i hope you've got your cheat sheet i did some major research because i am excited about so many different things i didn't want to forget anything on here so i'm gonna go ahead and just steal the show and i'm just gonna get things started man have you seen the uh, trailer for one love by the bob marley movie that's coming out i actually like bob marley a lot so i'm i'm really looking forward to that one i'm really looking forward to this one as well i think it's gonna be an amazing one i mean I, when i was rocking my boys to sleep when they were babies i sang three little birds nice and no woman no cry well it's gonna you know take place against the backdrop of all that tumultuous stuff back in the 70s and stuff so not only are we getting a nice biopic but it's, i always love to have kind of period pieces but of course when it comes out i am definitely eager to see that so that's on chris's list is that on your list as well it sounds like it is oh sure i definitely want to see excellent it. like i said i'm a big bob marley fan and i have been for a long long time nice well then i don't even know how i picked up bob marley he's just generational he's just been around right i just kind of found him on my own and kind of absorbed him yeah. what i mean by that is normally i get my music from people like my friend is like plays me something like here you would like this because i'm looking for movies i don't look for music but bob marley i kind of embraced on my own yeah anyway i'm a big fan of bob marley so yeah i'm really looking forward to that this is my message to you my big one yeah no there's probably two Oh, there's like three go for it shit there's like three big movies i want to see choose one just pull it out of the hat let's go so the first movie i saw after the pandemic and people were going back to the theater and i've said this story before but the first one that i came back and saw was dune part one yeah okay so. that was the like best movie i could have gone to see in the theater yeah. to come back and reignite that like oh this is why we go to the movie theater because it's big and it's epic and i had read the book i was more of a lord of the rings fan than a dune fan but i've read it several times so i'm very familiar with it and i have friends who are big big frank herbert fans that's cool i am not familiar with it at all so i went on with the series it gets really super weird when he like turns into like a half worm and it's all like, dude, this guy was eating a lot of mescaline <laughs> or, you know, psilocybin <laughs> mushrooms or something. Frank Herbert, like literally it goes way yeah. psychedelic and it was of that time period and he's a philosopher. So I was like, okay, this guy was going way deep into that. Anyway, Dune part one, I thought was so amazing. So I cannot wait for Dune part two. Right, one of those sequels that's coming out this year. It's not really a sequel. It's really just the- It's part of, I, I get that. It's the same story. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It 
is, but it's a fulfillment of the story. But yeah, that's what a sequel is. Um, <laughs> I would argue that is not true. That's what a sequel is. I'm just saying. Is Two Towers a sequel to Fellowship of the Ring? Absolutely. You're wrong. Oh, it's part two of one story. I guess we're gonna have to fight about it. That is ridiculous. No, seriously, leave the comments below. You're ridiculous. I think Lawler has no idea what he's talking about. No, 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 no. Part two of one story is not a sequel. You get out of here. It's not a sequel. Uh, <laughs> Either way, Ghostbusters uh, Two is a sequel. Sure, but the Two Towers is not a sequel. <laughs> Dune Part Two is not a sequel. Then why do we call it the trilogy? Then, if it's part of a trilogy, gotta have a sequel in there. Well, technically, if we want to go into that, that's actually the publishers because in post-war England, um, actually, there was a paper shortage, and so they couldn't release the Lord of the Rings um, actually, all as one volume. So they had to break it up into three. <laughs> so it is specifically it's, one it's, volume. <laughs> Jog on. Fuck. Wagging your fingers at me. <laughs> Great. Dune Part Two. I'm excited for it as well. It looks fantastic. I want to see the first one, or you know what I mean, the first part and stuff before I go and see that. I did miss out on that, but it would be a fun experience in the theater. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's really well done. Well, then I'm up next, and I think this one once again hits your list. It's the one by Alex Garland, and it's been causing a lot of controversy. We got a lot of views on our short when I was talking about this on Hollywood Highlight, but that's for Civil War that's coming out this year with Kirsten Dunst. Uh, Wagner Mora, Stephen McKinley Henderson, Kaylee Spaney, Jesse Plemons, Nick Offerman. Uh, quite a cool cast and stuff, man. You've seen the trailer, right? Yes. I was, I think you sent it to me. I can't even remember. But it's definitely one of those that, once again, got the hair standing up on the back of my neck. Well, yeah. It looks gripping and fun. It's timely. Timely for sure. <laughs> Alex Garland, who wrote and directed it, he wrote the book for The Beach. Right. And then that, of course, got adapted by himself and Danny Boyle into the movie. Mm -hmm. And then Alex Garland wrote 28 Days Later. And then he started directing his own. Ex Machina. Which was Ex Machina, Annihilation. Annihilation. Yep. So I'm very familiar with this person's you know previous body of work. Yeah. And I thought the responses to your short about it were hilarious. <laughs> so he posted, I don't know if anyone knows, but... I don't know if you guys saw this one. He posted a short... Yeah, it went viral for us. <laughs> ...from his Hollywood highlights about Civil War, and the responses almost all came from one camp, am I right? <laughs> Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. Which is fine because that's Which obviously the conversation. Hopefully it opens conversation, but we're not here to necessarily, uh, you know, mitigate that. I want to just talk about the fun of the films. And obviously... No, I was just more amused by the response from that side. Yeah, I know, right. But also, I was confused by one of them, though. We may repost it. And uh, then I'm just going to call this one out. It said, like, you know, something about, like, one side has guns and the other side doesn't know which bathroom to use that isn't a full-length <laughs> movie. <laughs> what the fuck that one and is. i thought but wait a second in the trailer it says it's texas and california that secede mm -hmm. and and like 13 at 13 states i don't know if that person's aware but everyone in texas is packing heat and i'm pretty <laughs> sure that they can use the bathroom wherever the fuck they want because they're texans any room i'm in is a bathroom they use the bathroom on the alamo right uh, that was uh yeah famously done by um ozzy osbourne who was just watching airheads where they were mentioning that it is time went back rocks the house who'd win in a wrestling match let me your god let me ah! later bacon <laughs> let me is god man. okay so uh, really civil war i'm really excited about that that's on mine that's on yours so yeah and it's my kind of style because i like you know provocative i like provocative movies as well and i don't know if you guys saw this trailer but there are some intense looking scenes in there and i i just can't wait to see it and i love kirsten dunst that's on both of our lists but go ahead give me the next shout out what, what's coming out in 2024 okay so another one that i really really want to see is of course <laughs> Oh, that was the next one on my list. So perfect. Yes, with George Miller coming back and giving us the prequel uh, to Mad Max with Anna Taylor Joy. Which I think, like, Anya Taylor Joy, excuse the me. The idea of a prequel, just sort of in general, doesn't always set 
well with me. But if it's, I mean, if it, if this was done by another director, there's arguments for it again. That's that's all because it's George Miller. It's like yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's gonna get the love and treatment at once. And I mean, once again, he's been writing a comic book series around the whole Mad Max Fury Road movie and stuff. So they've been continuing storylines with all these characters and stuff. Well, it's his, it's his like, it's his baby, man. So he's been doing it for decades. Like once again, if another studio had their hand on this and then they were interjecting another director to just milk money. I would not be okay with this, but it is another George Miller attempt, and I think it's going to be amazing, man. I want to see Chris Hemsworth. I like when he... I love it. So good. He's done some interesting roles, actually. So he's playing Dementis in this one. He's going to be a new kind of warlord, but obviously the one that sets Furious on her path. So I think he's going to be the main antagonist. And I think there is going to be a uh, Immortan Joe, a younger Immortan Joe uh, in this one as well. Our babies will not be warlords. <laughs> so I'm excited for that. What's your story with Mad Max, Road Warrior, George Miller? Like, how were you introduced? What about Mad Max? Oh, it's a blood of bloke. He's mad, mad, and he's called Max. Perfect time. I to those, you know what I mean? Grew up, you know, obviously just around cinema, you hear of movies, right? Yeah. And yeah, honestly, the first movie uh, eluded me for years. I had seen Beyond Thunderdome because that's the one that was really popular on HBO when I was younger and stuff. So I'd seen- Me too. And I saw it on TBS. Yes. Yeah. But I only seen the ending. So I keep seeing the Thunderdome fight like over and over again and Tina Turner. And I was like, what is this ridiculous shit? So I didn't know the lore. I didn't really know what was going on with that. But then when I first moved out and I got my first apartment, you know, trolling at uh, Walmart or something. And I found it in like the $5 bin on VHS, no less too. So, cause that's how fucking old I am. Are you talking the original Mad Max or Road Warrior? Yeah, the, ori the original one. Okay. And that, that was really my final intro, you know, introduction to it was finally getting to watch it when i bought it uh later in life but i mean i was 18 at the time my came later than and you. stuff and obviously just like watched it over and over again i it's not let me really tiptoe on this one because i know this is a sense of something it's not the greatest movie but it is a great start at someone's filmmaking attempts and then when i started learning about why george miller made this movie and stuff because he was working as a ambulance person and like a paramedic uh at, at like an er in australia and street racing and motorcycle racing was huge and these kids were coming in just shredded of their skin and stuff so he created this world where like living by your car was like a big deal and that's kind of where it like stemmed from so it was more of like a practice in stunt work and camera work and storytelling like you really it's thinly loose like when it comes to his storytelling now you can tell he's really grown so it's a great first attempt and obviously we wouldn't have mel gibson without this and mel gibson is really good in it like there are genuine oh dude when the daughter gets run over in that movie spoiler alert <laughs> but when his daughter gets run over in that movie i'm like that was shot really well that's why he's mad heart-wrenching and that's why he's mad and i fucking i do love it um so but obviously fury road stands above all the rest in my opinion i really think he brought magic back to cinema with that one i just the storytelling that's going on in Furio is so good. So that's what gets me so hyped with Furio. We literally cannot gush enough about I know, right? About that movie. I don't know if you guys see the new set, but I really wanted a Mad Max Fury Road poster back here. But I went ahead and opted up for some old Spielberg stuff. I went for the vintage. Yeah, I went for vintage. Like you, I had only seen Beyond Thunderdome and I'd seen like scenes from it on TBS. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it wasn't until I was probably in my twenties and and one of my it was like my third stint at a, video, a local video production company that I used to work at in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And my boss and sort of my first mentor at that time was a big fan of The Road Warrior. Which is a way great movie. He was the one who... That one I really enjoyed. Because we used to sit around and talk mm -hmm. the same the way same you shot. and nice. I were talking. Now, he's just older and more of a mentor figure, but we were having the same sort of discussions and I was younger and learning and all that good stuff. Yeah. He asked me probably if I had seen it and I was like... I don't know, that fucking movie with Tina Turner. He's like, no, dumbass. <laughs> but he was like, you need to watch one. The Road Warrior. And so I went back and watched The Road Warrior. It's so and good. That movie's the fucking jam. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen that one several times. That's when I went and watched the original Mad Max. Mm. And I came to the same conclusion ultimately you did. I was like, yeah. that was a good start. Mm -hmm. Man, they really raised the bar between one and two. Holy and shit. There's still great moments and scenes that they put in there. I mean, when he t tells that dude that he's going to blow up and he throws him the hacksaw. You're lucky. You've been hacked through your ankle. That's fun. That's a great scene right there. I mean, that is just an iconic moment. But really, the Road Warrior. My favorite moment about the Road Warrior was introducing the wife to it. 
because she had seen South Park where they parried it. Just walk away. Ooh, he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And then she sees the scene. She's like, just, just walk, walk away. away. Oh, and I was like, did, they didn't just create that. Of course they were parodying something. And yeah, it is this. South Park is always parodying something. Oh, yeah. man. So just watching her like have that moment of realizing like, oh, now that scene's 20 times funnier. It is. And stuff like that. Totally. So just walk away. Anything with butters. <laughs> he's my favorite character. So that was uh, Furiosa. Definitely. What's, what's on for you, man? I'm going to move on to the big other one, Deadpool 3. Okay. I'm a huge Deadpool fan. You mentioned it before a couple episodes about how yeah. the rumors are he's going to show up and kill everyone. God, who knows what's going to happen now? Because now Ryan Reynolds himself has jumped on the bandwagon and started releasing more ridiculous behind-the-scenes photos with Predator. Of course he did. And, like, all kinds of different characters. And uh, it just looks awesome. I love the first one and the second one. The second one especially even more. You Talk about a person cast properly that's why i'm surprised you don't like just friends because that's still one of my favorite ryan reynolds movies with him and amy smart and i love that they just i don't think i watched that's it. a good holiday movie actually we should have talked about it on the holiday episode but anyway anyway so yeah Lindsay and i both like deadpool we both like deadpool 2 too the thing is like we, my wife and i are snarky people yeah and so that movie is it just works it's snark man it's sarcasm have you seen the director's cut of two i can't say for certain i finally saw it i didn't realize when i bought the digital version it came with an alternate cut oh and i finally accidentally found that the other day is it longer it's way longer and it has like totally different shots and it's edited completely differently and has like way different voice lines and stuff like that like it's a whole nother movie looks like the studio got hold of the original and made some changes that the director didn't like maybe it's way more violent it's got way more cursing and it's i think it's way funnier too oh cool they were like fuck it he made us so much money let's let him do whatever so i think he was like really off the cuff in the second one and i do like the story and how they introduced cable and brolin's amazing in that second one too Josh he's brolin. so good in that one man that's the big thing i'm waiting for it's just a trailer it's a sneak peek at what's coming what's something not quite so Ooh, big that you want to see next one on the list perfect next one on the list here man did you know ethan cohen is doing his first solo director debut this year i heard about this yeah man he wrote it with someone else uh, get ready for a wild lesbian road trip comedy when jamie and marion impulsively leave everything behind for a getaway to tallahassee they encounter an eclectic cast of characters from enigmatic hitchhikers to bumbling criminals their journey is peppered with hilarious misadventures it looks good unexpected twists and i think they're carrying something that belongs to some criminals it looks quirky and interesting i didn't get a chance to see the trailer i didn't know there was one out but i did see the synopsis and stuff and i was like well i like watch Cohen the trailer stuff. for that nice well yeah it looks like they've just taken a little split on that one That's so fine. That well they've been making movies together for like 35 fucking years or something and that comes out soon it says uh, on here release date february 23rd so that's coming out in just a few weeks yeah it's gonna be a small release well i think it was already done and set for release but the sag after strike pushed it to february that makes sense unfortunately so don't don't sleep on that one february is usually a slower month yeah all right well that was it man you got something a little bit more quiet yeah i really want to see book of clarence okay i did not come across that one what's book of clarence it's a biblical satire okay during the time of of the messiah anyway you need to watch the trailer okay i don't even know if i can begin to explain it made me think of um life of brian in that sort okay. of it's a sat it's a spoof satire that's set at the same time nice and same geography as jesus of nazareth and it's saying like yeah but at the same time this was also going on it's that type of movie okay i watch it going i cannot wait to go see this movie nice what's what's next on yours there's one that just sort of stuck out in, I, I don't know if we're going to call this big or small, but it's The Fall Guy with uh, Ryan Gosling. Did you see that? The trailer looks hilarious. Yeah, Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling. And it's it's from David Leach, who, you know, has done a Tom Blonde and John Wick and stuff. And he used to be a stunt double for Brad Pitt and um, Keanu Reeves and some other people. So this is sort of like his take on a wild take on being a uh, stunt performer for an actor who goes missing. And then the stunt performer, for some reason, is in charge of hunting him down and bringing him to set. And and that just sounds wild and wacky and looks like a lot of fun to me. Well, it's based on an old 80s TV show. Oh, what? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. I it looks really fun and funny. And the chemistry between... You beat me to it. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's in my notes down here. It looks fun. And, you know, obviously it's going to be action-packed coming from the director of John Wick. It's going to hang on the action sequences and the chemistry between Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. That's yeah, what's going totally. <laughs> Carrie Mulligan. Bingo! <laughs> there it was. Out of nowhere, he finally got there. Carrie Mulligan. Ryan Gosling was in drive with, and then I was setting myself up. I knew it would, like, kick in. Carrie Mulligan. Way to go, buddy. 
I'm so proud of you, man. My apologies, Miss Mulligan. He's just trying to go Google free. I need to exercise it. That I guess that was my pick. What you got one more? The sequel to Joker okay. is coming out, which was, you know We didn't like Joker, so it was the first billion dollar r-rated movie so of course they were going to come up with a sequel yeah of course they were but yeah that is a sequel <laughs> it is not part two it's a sequel <laughs> you get out of here <laughs> yeah no i'm sure the hype around that one is real but for me and the wife we sat down and watched joker and by the end of it we were just like i don't see what everyone else is seeing it was all right it's not for me for sure joaquin is good of course then my big one is the bike riders Right. Yeah, with pretty boy Austin Butler, it was just Elvis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Tom Hardy, of course, who's great. And Tom Hardy, yep, and Norman Reedus is going to be in it as well. And Jody Comer. Set in the 60s, once again, period piece. I love period piece. 60s, great time. Bikers. And then this is definitely, like, exploring that uh, that era of why they even formed these gangs and stuff and how the evolution even began and obviously taking a little peek at like a president and a VP is what I kind of think the relationship is there. Um, so yeah, it's just the evolution of vandals from carefree brotherhood into a more sinister force. And I can't wait to see that one. I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, I can't wait for that. You got one more to throw in there. Yeah. I'm curious. I haven't seen a trailer for it mm -hmm. is uh, Kevin Costner has got a new directorial thing called horizons. Okay. And it's a two part movie. They're releasing it in like June and August or something. They're going to release it. Really? Okay. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> There is a lot to be said about Kevin Costner that, you know, we don't have to get into right now. Right. So let's just say, like, that's a whole topic of discussion as Kevin Costner, not just as an actor, but Kevin Costner, the filmmaker and all of that stuff. But I would say, you know, I kind of like Kevin Costner's movies that he's directed. So even Open Range, which we were talking about, which is more of like our dad's type of movie. Yeah. But I thought it was real. Or no, The Postman. The Postman. Postman. The Postman, yeah. But his mm. last one was Open Range, Open Range with Robert yeah. Duvall really good it's a western i never saw that one unfortunately you would consider it slow because westerns are, are. <laughs> so it's very much like he makes the genre but for that they're actually i feel like they're really good you know what i mean like i can i can dig on that and so i kind of want to see what he does we with know this. how much you love robin hood so right on my wife loves water world i don't know why i like that movie so much and it got so much hate it's a fascinating mess i mean once again it's mad max with water instead of desert that's really what it is and it, i actually really like water world the action sequences are fun man there's a cult following i just actually introduced that to the wife this last year so she I, it's always fun to introduce people to movies like that to just get a new perspective and see it kind of through their eyes yeah what did she think you know appropriately seven out of ten just like kind of i think where we all hold it you know it's not here but it's definitely not here where it deserves right a lot of that water stuff the like with the chases with the smokers and all that stuff because they did it practically what a pain in the ass to me yeah what a pain in the ass yeah anyway it's so horizon though back to the thing horizon has got a two-part thing coming out this year there's a bunch of stuff coming out but you know that's enough for us now i think we're going to talk about stuff more as we go that was a lot of films man yeah that's a lot to talk about that's a full episode i mean we talked we talked a lot of stuff there so i hope you guys are looking forward to 2024 just like we are of course what is the movie that you're looking forward to the most drop it down in the comments let us know hit that subscribe button if you haven't already like us share us with your friends and and your other cinephiles in your life and of course as we wrap up today's episode remember to check out cosplay curiosities for for incredible cosplay inspired apparel perfect for those times when you're not in costume but still want to showcase your love for the art head over to cosplaycuriosities.com and don't forget to use our exclusive code bttp for 20 percent discount on your purchase that's bttp all caps 20 percent purchase and that's it man do you have anything you want to tell the people i'm sorry carrie mulligan sorry <laughs> exactly we got there eventually i've been so a fan since pride and prejudice which i think is fantastic well that's about it for this one that is our first episode of the year happy 2024 thank you for tuning in and we look forward to bringing you some more fun content in season two